All right, ladies and gentlemen, these were the top stories in time now to talk about what I was telling you earlier before going moving on towards the top stories as well. So today, ladies and gentlemen, it is a UN recognized day and we are trying to observe and celebrate it. This is the second time that we are going to celebrate it. In fact, the, all the UN member states are going to celebrate it for the second time because it started previous year as well. So today, ladies and gentlemen, it is Micro, Small and Medium Size Enterprises Day and whenever we talk about small and medium enterprises, they are said to be the backbone of any economy because they hire people and you know these are smaller organizations with just a figure of 350 employees within that and other than that they have got quite a lot of impact on the vulnerable skilled workforce of the society as well where we talk about kids and women but whenever we talk about small and medium enterprises there are quite a lot of issues associated with that and for example when we talk about that that's access of financing so there are other people who finance as well but then you know we we need to talk about the inclusivity as well and that's why we have actually invited somebody who's very amazing he's been working in new york as well he spent most of his time of his life abroad now he's in pakistan he's working over here to make pakistan a better place as well he's none other than ladies and gentlemen somebody who is the chief investment officer at karandas as well over 25 years of experience in asset management investment strategy private equity funds as well he's none other than mr navid goraya hello assalamu alaikum how are you thank you for having wa alaikum assalam thank you very much for joining us so navid sahab let's get the conversation started first things first what is karandas tell us a little about karandas you know you are the cio of of that organization currently as well and what is it doing towards making pakistan inclusive within the terms of investment So Shahzad, you started with the right preamble, which is that micro, small, and medium enterprises yes. have limited access to financial services. Exactly. And in order to do that, there are various interventions that the state, the government of Pakistan, has started. The National Financial Inclusion Strategy being one of them, which dovetails into the 2025 Government of Pakistan vision. Karandas Pakistan does the same. It is uh, sponsored by two of the world's uh, preeminent uh, shareholders. the united kingdom's development uh, the department for financial uh, international mm-hmm. development uh, and uh, the bill and melinda gates uh, foundation wow uh, the two organizations have together committed about 164 million pounds in the department of uh, uh, international development in uk and uh, 30 odd million there about wow. and these organizations essentially um, have the same objective which is to create an environment in which the financial inclusion and the access to finance for SME is an easy process and uh, in order to do that uh, we have various intervention models right. that we have created uh, these include investments to equity these include investments uh, uh, to partnerships with financial institutions that give them credits on uh, programs in which uh, we risk participate and share the risk with them and the third very important thing is that we identify the areas in the industry that uh, have a market failure there is those there are those infrastructure elements in the financial sector that are missing and right. we for participate example. in that so for example uh, you mentioned microfinance so pakistan microfinance investment company is something that we have sponsored and with ptaf and the german development bank kfw jointly we created a platform there's a whole self finance platform to fund microfinance banks and microfinance investment companies yeah. who had difficulty in access, accessing finance otherwise and they will develop the market moving forward likewise for smes karandas pakistan has a similar strategy right. which is that we identify the sectors we identify the partners and we identify the equity investment opportunities in which companies will come to us and we uh, assess their growth uh, opportunity and primarily the employment growth so what is the response of women and youth yeah. is very important yeah we will definitely talk about that but what is the response you get from the companies are they reluctant are they willing you know what well, what's happening what's the situation within pakistan related to small and medium enterprises so it's absolutely amazing just once again uh, referring back to what you said because of the lack of equity yeah. and capital available to these companies we find that as the word gets out that karandas pakistan is willing and able to provide growth capital to these entities we are seeing that we are the catalyst that is going to allow these companies to grow wow. so we are getting almost an application a week from equity uh, seekers yeah. and we look at participating 3 to 5 million dollars in a particular investment 
uh, with a minority significant stake, but at the same time a very good contribution to it. At the same time, we've contributed almost about 5 billion rupees in the debt financing program. Oh, wow. And we have 10,000, 500 SMEs in which we have created 10,000 jobs. Wow. And, and tens of billions of dollars of revenue increase. So when you look at these two things, if Tarandas alone can contribute this both in the equity and the debt front, exactly. a Tarandas 2, a Tarandas 3, how much value addition they could provide. Exactly. And you know, it, it is being said, you know, while I was researching and I was studying that, you know, SMEs are actually the flag bearers of giving away jobs as well. So 90% or 80% of the jobs come from small and medium enterprises. And if that's what the case is, why do you think that they have difficulty at having access to finance then? So true, so true. I mean, in terms of the employment contribution, 80% does come, as you said. In, in, in addition to that, 25% of export growth comes, uh, export contribution comes from there. And uh, the unfortunate thing is that the credit available to these is only 9% of the total bank's lending. So with that kind of, that strangles the SMEs who are contributing so much to the capital. No, but then that's why you are SMEs, right? Because you can only give away the 9% of the total lending budget as well. So then how do we how do we clarify the situation that, okay, we need more finances to do this, 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 this. I think there needs to be an understanding in between the organizations or the SMEs with the government as well. Absolutely. And I think the government, which is State Bank of Pakistan, is making a substantial effort in encouraging the banks to lend more. Uh, to give you an example, if there's a bank, which we know of, uh, two or three banks actually, who are, whose current SME book is around 25 billion. Okay. State Bank of Pakistan has encouraged them to increase that book by 7 billion. Wow. So just look at the ratios. And that push from State Bank of Pakistan is something that we are looking at uh, and enjoying as well because that's exactly what we as a catalyst want these banks to do, these Karandas. And uh, with that push from State Bank, and also the encouragement that the bank's behavior has to change. They currently look at capital uh, and uh, collateral uh, as the major component before lending. Exactly. Now, should the banks move away to a collateral light or collateral free lending, you would see that the demand side is substantially there. And the growth in the economy is going to be, as you said, the lifeblood is going to substantially increase. So we hope the banks change the behavior and move into less of a collateral, more of cash flow based lending. All right, I, I think that that's a great idea. And since, you know, I'm, I might be a layman at talking about SMEs, but there's a few things which I even studied as well. And talking about my own experiences about SMEs, there's one more thing which I need to know, and that is that, you know, elsewhere, for example, if, if you go and see UK, or probably, you know, you came back from New York as well, the interest rates are not that high. And you still say that over here within Pakistan, we still have the demand where there are people who need this money to, you know, probably invest or do whatever they want to do. And then you are right that, you know, collaterals and all of these things, that's what they require. Making it, making the process difficult for, for the normal human being to actually go in at the back and ask for all of those monies with whatever particular business idea he or she's got. So how do we bring them down? How do we change their attitudes? Because it needs to be done. So it's a very interesting question because there are two sides to it. On the one hand, banks find it easier to lend into risk-free assets like yes. the EIDs. And as the rates are going up, we think that that's going to be, again, something that will constrain capital. Okay. So your point is valid that then they try to manage the risk by increasing the rates, and we have to deal with that. On the other hand, State Bank of Pakistan, again, is taking the leading role by uh, putting in programs that offer financing to SMEs at a low discounted rate and okay. give them a refinancing facility from the banks to the banks. And in addition to that, State Bank of Pakistan has also provided guarantee, trade guarantee facilities. Now it's up to the banks to utilize those facilities and then increase the lending to the SMEs accordingly. Wow. Uh, up till now, one of the unfortunate things again is that we're not seeing the banks uh, making use of these entire facilities that are available, but Hopefully, with the push from State Bank to increase their asset base to SME, we think that is going to be. So there is a positive feel, but at the same time, that push is needed, which is where Karandaz again comes in, that we partner with banks, and then we tell them, and we share the risk with them, and encourage them to do pilot programs. 
Oh. And that's what's needed right okay, now. Okay, that's great. But uh, you know, don't you think that you know leadership of all of these SMEs within Pakistan? I mean, for example, CIOs or CEOs or presidents or chairmen need to change their attitudes as well because I think that you know they actually try to imply all of what they think within their individual or personal life capacity that you know this might be quite a lot of risk and you know people over here when they manage to come across such an uh, such a job description they take lesser risks as well so what would you recommend to them that you know okay change your attitudes change your behaviors and help people out there and who's going to benefit from these SMEs in the coming years so again, you know, I hate to say that two sides to the story, but they are unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> At the SME front, uh, the SMEs do bear a burden, okay. and that burden is to create dependable and verifiable financial statements and accounts. Right. Until that is not available, uh, banks will continue to rely, and rightfully so to some extent, on credit uh, collateral backed right. collect credit. Uh, or relationship based, which is always right to have a relationship based, but that is something that we need to ensure that they do. On the other hand, as far as you said, the investment companies, uh, many private equity funds in Pakistan, yes. uh, less than 10, maybe 6 private equity funds. So if you're looking at equity contribution or private credit contribution from these funds, the funds that are there have a ticket size of something like $10 million or more. I mean, Karandaz is the only fund I think out there that operates in the three to five million dollars, which is what is needed for growth capital for equity. The other funds are in the bigger ticket space, so therefore, again, that capital is not available. And then, how do you think society is going to benefit from the SMEs in the years to come? I think, uh, other than jobs and other than having an impact on the vulnerable skilled workforce, kids and the men and youngsters of the country. But how do you think? I mean, for example, if I were to do, if I have a business plan, I go to one of the SMEs, I don't think that they'll probably like my face. No, I think uh, the, the, the SMEDA, which is uh, the Small and Medium Enterprise or Authority and Trade Association, are playing a very important role. Okay. I think to give you a classic example, go to Shalco. Yes. Meet the Shalco, SMEDA uh, and Trade Association. It is unbelievable what that department or the organization has done. Yeah. They've contributed to building of an airport, they've contributed to building of roads, yeah. the schools, and these are the kind of activities, the social the impact where if the small and medium enterprises get together and organize themselves, the impact they can create. Thank you very much for sharing that as well because ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share one of my experiences and it was very beautiful to listen to what that guy said. So I was traveling back from England, I stopped over in Qatar because I was flying from that airline and then there was a young guy who came over and he was like, I want to take a picture with you and I was like, you know what, where are you headed? Are you going to Islamabad? And then he uttered and it was so beautiful, he said, I'm going to Chalkot. And I was like, do we have direct flights from Qatar or elsewhere? He was like, yes, we do. So this is the kind of impact we're talking about. But one last thing, which is for my own self of all those people who are out there, what are formal and informal SMEs? So look, uh, SMEs that operate in the uh, in the structured space, uh, they are what you would refer to as formal. But those SMEs that are still unstructured, they're not private entities, they're not partnerships, they would be the ones that you categorize as the informal SMEs. That and they can operate. still operate? They can, obviously okay. they can, but uh, you know, when they reach uh, an organization like ours for capital, we would like them to be in the okay. private limited structured space yeah. where they have an audited account, where they have statements. And that's where I think once again the onus goes back on the SME space. The and it's always good to have that. limited liability as well. <laughs> but so thank you very much Naveed Gurasa for My being pleasure. with us on talking about you know SMEs and you know it's a day to celebrate that as well. And ladies and gentlemen in days to come I think this, this is the way to go because uh, as I have mentioned earlier that uh, they are even uh, working with the vulnerable workforce as well but other than that you know it's all about having a financial inclusive society as well and even other than that there are so many other benefits which you might not even recognize because macro is something very different from micro and micro is for all of us for all of us people who are out there as well so please make sure that you have your own follow up as well and if you have to write to us we will definitely give you the uh, addresses of the Facebook and Instagram by the end of the show but now we're going to change the feel of the show, we're going to move towards a new career line, which I think is not very conventional. So let's go ahead towards a short break, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Good morning.